No one ever thought about the idea of how do we use pulse light and pulse sound to uh, get someone more relaxed, or at least not since ancient times of shaman dancing around a campfire. I'm Richard Hanbury, CEO and founder of uh, Sun Health, um, and this is our device. Uh, I made the first prototype of this to solve my own nerve damage pain problem um, back in 1993 after a Jeep crash in the Yemen. Uh, so yeah, lying in, lying in a hospital bed, um, being told I had a five year life expectancy, then trying to figure out um, how to get any kind of pain relief at all. Uh, I watched a movie in hospital that flipped me in and out of what we would now call a flow state. That had me want to try and figure out whether we could hack that to find a way to produce a device um, that would give me that, that same relief as watching a movie did, but do it reliably and whenever I wanted it. Um, so it was laptops, wires and boxes originally. Um, and then a very long wait until wearable technology really started to catch on. Uh, 2015 um, was basically when I realized that wearable tech was catching up with what I wanted to make. Um, and this version of the device doesn't yet quite do everything we wanted to do, but the next gen, which will be available end of next year, uh, will have everything we wanted to do in it. Yeah, so basically the device uses pulse light and pulse sound to change patterns in the brain. So someone puts on the device, turns it on, and then they lie back, and then they're getting stimulated through their eyes and their ears in order to create a very specific relaxation effect within the brain. Um, essentially, there are different ways you can affect the brain. You can affect it with drugs. Um, you can affect it with magnets and electrics and audiovisual. Now, audiovisual is your brain's primary way of receiving information from the world. Um, so we are using that information stream to get the information inside the brain that we want to get inside the brain, which is essentially, here's a reference signal, signal for how you're supposed to work. And the brain goes, oh yeah, I remember how to do that. And then it does it straight away. Once the, lights are, once the device is on, they're seeing a very gentle pulse of light and hearing a, a tone that's repeating. And some people turn it down so low that it's barely visible and barely audible. And some people turn it up so high that it's really strong. So some people prefer an experience that's much more like Reiki, like energy healing, and the other end of the spectrum would be like a full-on Swedish massage. So your brain is either getting something very gentle or something very strong or somewhere in between. And then basically in each individual is changing it per session to what they feel they need at the time. So right now we are um, on market as a wellness device. Um, so we are allowed to advertise for helping people with sleep um, and improving mental wellness. We're going through pivotal trials for the FDA with fi for fibromyalgia and neuropathic pain. And then later, at the beginning of next year, we'll be starting anxiety and PTSD uh, clinical trials as well. So hopefully by the, ne the end of next year, uh, will be on market for a whole host of pain and mental health indications. So it's uh, 16 minutes uh, per session at the moment. Um, we're lengthening the ones at night because basically usually people use it last thing at night to put themselves to sleep and then to have a, a longer, uh, better quality night sleep. Um, the, the users from the fibromyalgia study that has completed on average are using still once a day. Um, and we've just now started a thousand person one arm study on fibromyalgia. Uh, that'll be the largest non-drug study ever done in, in fibromyalgia. And uh, that has started recruiting already. Well, essentially the neuropsychiatric drugs do add, do help some people in some ways. And they all come with a host of side effects. Um, opioids are totally necessary for some parts of the pain spectrum, but there's been an absence of other really good tools in the toolkit. So digital device-wise, there are CBT apps, there is uh, VR, um, and there are devices like ours, and these are all adding in potential tools into the toolkit. And together, um, we provide an alternative, alternative to some of the opioids, so hopefully opioids then get used more appropriately when they're most needed, and non-opioid alternatives and non-drug alternatives 
get used where, where we are most appropriate. So for us, what we see is long-term users tend to use about 30% less opioids. So in real time, they're making choices. Do I want to use the device and then spend time with my kids or drive, uh, work, or do I want maximum pain relief and not mind that I can't do much and I'm just snowed out and I'm watching TV? And so people in real time, that's the ideal that people in real time get to choose what is right for them in that moment. Uh, we recently attended Pain Week, uh, which is the premier um, conference each year for pain clinicians. And we did a survey, and out of 142 um, people completing the survey, it was basically 98%. Uh, we are very interested in a non-opioid alternative. Um, all the same frustrations around fibromyalgia is the drug that is most commonly used is Lyrica, which um, has really difficult side effects for people who use it. So there's a, there's a very great need and there's a very well perceived and understood need for alternatives. Um, so just looking to be out on market for those pain conditions as soon as we can present the FDA with compelling enough evidence. So I'm really excited about 2022 because we're going to have four very large indications worth of data coming through to prove our efficacy. Um, and then next year becomes about the growth story and how we finally get to the end of my so far 28 year mission to get the device out from just helping myself to helping tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of other people. So what we're really looking to partner with is the people who have the data on who has anxiety conditions, depression, pain conditions that can be helped by the device and who has that, that, those distribution networks to help us get devices to the people that need it. Because whilst this is great for going to sleep on an airplane, and I use that every time I fly long haul, it's not the people that really need it. The people who really need it are the people with medical conditions that currently aren't getting help or enough help from their current solutions. And so it's finding the people that have access to those patients. So for example, uh, the digital health companies that have platforms that are reaching millions of people already who can identify, okay, these people aren't being helped enough by an app, they need some extra help. Um, within anxiety, depression, pain, those are the people we really want to partner with. Um, and obviously we continue to need increased finance to, to, to fund all the things we're trying to do in parallel. Because typically startups, you know, going after one target make that target and then expand. Um, but it's worked out for us that we're going off to four at the same time. So it's a different problem.